GPT-3 is sort of the first incarnation of the second wave of generative modeling technology. The first wave being the deep fakes, where we're just generating fake images. With GPT though, what we're finding is they're able to sort of in input uh, how to operate a vehicle, for instance. And then with the GPD model, we're actually seeing results coming back of additional two paragraphs it might actually include maintenance on that vehicle well above what was originally just entered into the model itself. So it's actually generating new content that is very much human-like, that it's not even just automated content anymore. It's actually new, unique content that is very human-like. And this is what we're seeing in GPT-3. Yeah, so we're going to be talking about deep fakes. Um, and essentially the area of generative modeling of AI. And what that means is it's a whole branch of AI that talks about generating content from essentially either trained latent spaces of data or essentially just generating one-off content from, in, in some perceptions, almost out of nowhere. So you get these models that are like the GPT-3, which is a, a form of natural language processing transformer that can generate some really good natural language text once you prompt it with some input text. One of the things that captivated my attention was just how uh, in the area of creative arts, which in my mind has always been an area that's been uh, sanctified uh, just for humans, um, might be something that uh, this uh, type of technology might start to find itself uh, showing up in. Um, so for example, using deep fake uh, approaches, um, a movie production company might be able to create a, a movie uh, using an actor or an actress that wasn't even on set. And so just with that realization alone, just in, in terms of the creative arts, it really had me thinking about uh, some of the creative uses uh, of, uh, of these advances. There are lots of good uses of uh, this uh, deep fake or generative uh, adversarial networks these days, but recently uh, most of the articles are focusing on the negative sides, uh, which is easy to uh, see the potential harms, um, but um, I think the good in this is more than the bad. And uh, we need to educate ourselves to uh, trust only reputable resources. I totally agree. I think that um, we hear a lot about the dangers of deep fakes, you know, people getting hacked or just fake news and things like that. But um, it's just that it recognizes finer details to things that we don't really recognize or we don't really think about. So like Tim mentioned with uh, being able to use deep fakes for um, art purposes or uh, for movies or things like that um, can bring people back to life technically. Um, and that would be really useful. Like say you can have Abraham Lincoln teaching people about American history and that would make it way more entertaining than having a, movie about American history, a movie that's super old and just doesn't help to make the information stick, right? So I think that there can be a lot of good uses for deep fakes. So for example, one of the, um, the video I was watching that um, actually people have been using deep fake to help produce like a fake news, such as creating fake videos of politicians. And as a result, this could actually manipulate media um, which can influence political conversations and perception of uh, public figures. So I definitely have seen a lot of, I would say, inappropriate usage of this technology so far, um, which worries me a lot because again, without like a proper governance and also control, especially for like a powerful general modeling like this, we really don't know like how the technology could lead us. I think one of the other ways that this technology will help, particularly in the area of arts, is it democratizes entertainment and art. Um, if we think about uh, pieces of art that are very rare, let's uh, say the Mona Lisa, where there's only one of it in the world. Well, if all of a sudden it is no longer 
special and everyone can have their own Mona Lisa, that might help to eliminate some of the counterfeit markets where pirating occurs or bootleg copies. Um, so th there, there definitely would be some positive um, benefits of having this type of uh, technology that's further developed. Another application, uh, which is, I think, very important application of deepfake is uh, the medical applications. Um, deepfakes are used to generate uh, many deep, uh, many fake uh, images, medical images that can uh, use to train the networks uh, for detecting different disease. Because it can capture so many details and be more, like, it's creating virtual humans, then I think in the medical field, it would be really useful for say, like if you have a virtual nurse that you talk to about your symptoms when you're sick, or just having like a virtual tutorial of how to take a medication or something, and having that human looking person explaining everything to you would make you feel better, make you feel more comfortable about what you're doing and that you're doing it right. The other, I would say example, the other concern I have for the technology is more related to potentially privacy uh, breach and also identity theft. Given right now using the um, like this model or technology, it will be so easy for people to fake the videos, which means potentially it might also be easy for them to pretend another person. So try to imagine that if like someone else is trying to pretend as you and making some fake videos in order to gain inappropriate access to your assets or your data, um, it will actually end up being, being as like a disaster because what what that means is like the, the potential, I would say, identity theft actually will be booming or will be increased a lot more compared to right now, just given the, I would say, lack of governance, especially, and also um, lack of safeguarding of the technology. And specifically for deepfake, again, I'm thinking about the jobs that need to involve a lot of potentially like a filming or like a video. For example, we have seen some examples where they have used the AI technology to, to pretty much act as like a, like a, like a video uh, podcast or like a reporter. For example, we have seen like a, like a, like a reporter on the, on, on the TV, even using like a deepfake technology. So those could be the example where I've seen or where I, I, I feel like definitely could be impacted and also replaced for, by the new technology.